everybody. Welcome to the Music Corner. I'm your host, Jonathan Kiyu. For the next half hour, we're going to work at making you a better guitar player and a better musician, and uh, hopefully give you some ideas that you can take away from our show today and use when you're playing on your own, but also when you're playing with other people too, family members, friends, other people you know who play instruments and play the guitar. So the theme for today's show is chord play. And that's a little phrase I made up because it's uh, friendly sounding. It makes you think that's something that you might want to do. Chord play sounds like anybody can do it, right? Chord play. So I'm going to give you a quick example of what I'm talking about, and then we'll get into the details. Here's an example of using a C chord, doing what I call chord play. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be staying on my C chord, but maneuvering my fingers on my left hand a little bit um, to get a popular tune. See if you recognize this tune. Recognize that, that little guitar introduction from a famous movie uh, from the 1970s? I'll give you some more uh, hints in a minute. Anyways, chord play. So what's chord play all about? Well, here's the idea. I'm hoping that a lot of you out there are familiar with your basic open position chords. C, A minor, G, D, E minor, things like that. The reason those are called open position chords is because by and large, those chords I just mentioned and, and several others uh, involve some open strings and some fretted strings with your left hand. Uh, so they're known as open position chords. And it's the ones that most of us learn pretty early on in guitar playing. If you haven't mastered these chords yet, A, C, D minor, uh, let this show be an inspiration to you to start getting down uh, to business and mastering those chords. But hopefully you do have a little working knowledge of those chords. So go grab your guitar, uh, tune it up, and uh, <clears throat> let's have some fun with those chords. So that little guitar introduction I played a minute ago, uh, a song written by Fred Neal for the movie Midnight Cowboy. Uh, he sang a great version of it, but if you see that movie Midnight Cowboy, if you hear this song on the radio, uh, you'll hear, I believe, Harry Nilsson sing it, a song called Everybody's Talking. Uh, many years ago, I wanted to learn that tune, and I couldn't quite figure out what the chord progression was. Let's focus on my left hand for a second here. I was working on figuring out that nice introduction to Everybody's Talking, and I, I didn't realize it until someone pointed out to me that what your left hand is doing here is a C chord changing to a C chord minus the index finger. And let's stay focused on the left hand for a second. I'm going to play it for you. You can see my index finger is going to be on the guitar and then off the guitar. doesn't get any easier than that, right? You're actually doing less work. You're holding on a C chord and you're doing less work, right? Now, I couldn't figure out what that second chord was. I thought it must be some sort of, you know, E minor or something else. And someone pointed out to me, nope, you just let go of that index finger. So ever since then, I've been trying to um, show people how all the work you did learning these basic chords is going to pay off big rewards with big rewards now because we're going to modify those chords in some very easy ways. And that's what I call chord play. So that introduction to everybody's talking is a good example of that. Catchy introduction fits the song perfectly, but actually involves doing less work than you'd expect, right? When I say less work, I mean you have the C chord, and then you lift off your index finger. And you get that new chord. By the way, the name of that new chord, as soon as you lift off that index finger, it's got a C major 7. Don't worry too much about the name right now, but just know that it is a distinct new chord. In this case, you're getting it by just lifting off one finger. Okay, so chord play. So for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to talk about how you can modify a lot of your favorite chords, especially the major chords. So we're going to be talking about C, uh, D, F, A, you know, the, the, mas the most basic major chords. You can get a lot of mileage out of these. Okay, so let's take, that, uh, let's take that C chord, and let's start with that one. Since C is a pretty friendly chord, a lot of you out there, I'm sure I've played C, you know, since day one on the guitar. So let's focus on the left hand for a second and talk about what else you can do with a C. We talked about how a C major can turn into a C major 7 by lifting off the index finger. How you choose to strum it with your pick or play with your bare fingers, finger style guitar, that's up to you. You can have as much fun as you want to. But just know that it's an extremely common thing to lift off that finger to get a distinct sound. So let's talk about some other modifications you can do. Your pinky. Your pinky is your secret weapon. We're going to be talking a lot about your uh, left hand pinky today. <clears throat> the pinky is a secret weapon, and the reason I say that is because the pinky very often is available. It can add in extra notes and add in some pretty cool sounds by fretting a, a, a new string. So I still have my C chord here, 
But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my pinky on this skinny string, that's your skinny E string, third fret. <clears throat> and it naturally wants to land right there anyways. Here's what it sounds like if I have my pinky down. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a few strums without the pinky and a few strums with the pinky. How about four strums on each? Here we go. Okay, pretty easy, right? And a good exercise for your pinky. There's actually not even another name for that chord. It's still a C chord. The reason there's not a new fancy name for that the note we're adding is a note that's found elsewhere in the chord. We're adding a high G. We've already got a, a lower G, your open third string anyways. So in this particular case, there's no new name for it. Okay, so <clears throat> how might a songwriter or guitar player use this particular, you know, pinky edition? Well, say a singer is singing, and there's a moment where there's empty space, meaning the lyrics have stopped, maybe the next verse hasn't kicked in. Well, a guitar player might add that pinky in for a little embellishment like this. Two, three, four. Singing, right? Singing. And the singing stops and the guitar player might go. And the sing can start in again. You know? So, at an extremely minimal price, very little effort there, a guitar player is just adding a nice little, a nice little touch. You know, keeps the listener engaged, keeps the song moving forward. Almost anything is better than just staying on the chord and, and doing nothing and just waiting for the next verse or chorus to come around. Okay, so let's go back to the left hand here. So far we've talked about uh, adding the pinky on the skinny string, third fret. We've talked about <clears throat> lifting off the index finger. How about adding the pinky in second string, third fret? That happens to be the note D right there. Notice I'm keeping the rest of my C chord down. I'm going to add in my pinky on my second string third fret. Here's the sound you get. Okay. <clears throat> Instead of strumming so much, if I pick individual strings, a nice little arpeggio pattern, listen to the effect I'll get now. And that could be a nice little introduction for a song. If you're going to be on a C chord anyways, you may as well have some fun with it. Hence the name here today, chord play. Okay, let's stay on the left hand. How about <clears throat> adding the pinky third string, third fret? So far we've talked about adding the pinky on the first string, third fret, second string, third fret. Now we're on the third string, third fret. Now where do you hear the effect this is going to have? Some, some of you might recognize this as a C7 chord. Okay, I'll strum a little bit without the pinky, and then I'll put it down on that third string, third fret. You hear that nice bluesy note we're adding there? And again, the pinky's not doing anything anyways. So the effect now is adding the pinky on the B flat note. And the B flat note adds such a nice bluesy touch to a C chord. In this context, B flat is a very bluesy note. You know, and you end up with a, no, cor, a chord known as the C seventh chord or C dominant seven. Not to be confused with the C major seven. We got the C major seven earlier <clears throat> by lifting off the pointer finger. Okay, so quick recap. We're talking about the C chord here. We have C chord with no index finger, known as the C major seven. C chord with a pinky on the first string third fret. Doesn't have another name. That's a cool sound. C string with the pinky on the second string, third fret. Uh, I guess we could call that a C, a C add nine chord. C add nine. Don't get hung up on the names. C with a pinky on the second string, third fret, and lastly a C dominant seven chord, pinky on the third string, third fret. <clears throat> okay, one more trick here on the uh, on the left hand. One more trick here on the C chord. And don't worry, we're going to get to more chords in a minute. I'll make it fast. C chord with the middle finger moving to a skinnier string from where it already is. It's moving from the fourth string to the third string. See that? 
fourth string to the third string. Then check out this effect. This might remind you of a lot of a lot of songs. See how easy that is? I mean, it, it doesn't get any easier, but what a cool sound. I'm going to strum it another way. How cool is that? <clears throat> Essentially what you're getting there is a C major chord changes to what's known as a C6 chord. Kind of a classic country or rockabilly kind of sound. Okay, so let's step back for a moment. Like I said, the theme today is chord play. <clears throat> We're starting with a C chord because it's such a relatively easy, accessible, open position chord. Sometimes you're lifting off a finger, sometimes you're adding a finger, like the pinky, and sometimes you're taking what I call an existing finger and just moving it to a new place and getting all sorts of new effects and new names. You can use these little tricks all the time. You just have to find which one is right for the song you happen to be playing. But your ear will tell you. You can trust your ear to tell you which one is the way to go. Okay, let's move on past the C chord. Okay, now I'm going to whip through these other chords a little bit faster because I think by now you probably get the idea of what we're doing. Let's talk about the D chord. Hopefully you've had a little experience with the D chord. Let's talk about some of the easiest things you can do with the D chord. Again, pinky, our secret weapon, adding it first string, third fret, and taking it off. <clears throat> Recognize this tune. Okay, good old Tom Petty. He did. Guitar teaches a big favor by writing that song because it allows us to talk about stuff like this. So, <clears throat> D with a pinky added. It tucks in right under the ring finger. Skinny string, third fret. <clears throat> How about D with no middle finger? Very cool sound. I'm gonna make up a little riff here using this, this D with no middle finger and then I'm gonna add the middle finger. See what you think of this riff. You know, it sounds like something, right? And you can even combine these two Ds that we've learned so far, D with the pinky and D with no middle finger. Tell me if this rings a bell. Uh, there's probably about a dozen hit songs that use that little riff in some form or another. Okay, one more while we're on the subject of D. There was another tune that I uh, came across when I was first learning how to play the guitar, and it had a riff I couldn't quite figure out. You might recognize this one. Okay, Creedence Clearwater Revival, their Bad Moon Rising. Now, right after that part, there's a little extra thing. I'm going to show you that part right now. Check this out. I'm going to slow it down. Now, here it comes. See that? My little pinky adding in. Again, chord play. The pinky's not doing anything anyway, so let's give it a job. In slow motion, watch this. The pinky is jumping in on the third skinny string, fourth fret. And that's that rockabilly sound we heard earlier on the C chord, going from a D major to a D6. Don't worry too much about the names right now. That's not the most important thing. OK, so good old John Fogarty from Creedence Clearwater. He knew he was going to end up on a D chord, but he wanted to have some fun with it. So when he got to that final D chord of, of his rhythm guitar riff, he added, he gave us a little, little something extra, you know? I'll do it again in slow motion. Here we go. And if you listen closely, of course, you recognize there's that little pinky guitar riff in that tune. But, you know, in, unless someone shows you what the trick is, you might wonder, oh, what's that new sound he's getting? Well, now you know, just adding the pinky in. So if we take it out of context, if we put John Fogarty aside for a minute here, we can just have fun with that as a, as a catchy little guitar riff, right? So again, imagine you're playing and the singer is singing, or maybe you are the singer. It gets to a spot where there's no uh, vocals time for someone to fill in the space in a, in a musical way, well now you've got something. And 
the singer's singing, you're strumming away, the song's going on, and all of a sudden it comes back to the D chord and you've got to do something. You've got to lose something right there. Now for those of you who are experienced guitar players, maybe you've done this before, that's terrific, you know? Maybe I'm, uh, this can be a reminder to you to all the different things you can do with just the basic chords. There's a million chords in the world. The question is, what can you do with them? When I look back at my progress on the guitar over the um, 20 something years I've been playing the guitar, it's not that I uh, have come up with new revolutionary ways of playing the guitar. I've taken the fundamentals and found new creative things to do with them. That's what you're going to do too. That's what we all do. You, you take the fundamentals and you, you, know, you explore them. You come up with little tricks and you find out that someone else has done it before you. But that's okay. It's still part of your bag of tricks. Okay, you ready to move on? We've covered C and D. Uh, how about an A chord? Good old A major. Okay, see if you spot this riff. Okay, we've heard that before. Sounds like the Beatles to me, Ticket to Ride, right? So, let's focus in on the left hand, left hand A chord. What were the Beatles doing then? Well, they were playing an F, but they were temporarily lifting off their ring finger and putting it back down. Slow motion. You know, just a neat chord, A with one finger less. Now, I want to remind you, you're actually doing less work, right? Think of this as doing less work. You had the A chord, you lift off a finger. Doesn't get any better than that. You know, very interesting sound, too, if someone were to strum that chord. kind of associate that song with, um, the, with Pete Townsend from The Who and Behind Blue Eyes, that this particular chord. You know, kind of a spooky sound a little bit. What else can you do with an A chord? Well, how about this one? There's my A chord. I'm going to glide my ring finger up one fret. And then I'm going to bring it back into position. A suspended chord. Very, very common sound, very common guitar technique. You could get the same effect by doing it with your pinky, if you prefer. We're talking about the second skinny string third fret. How about A with the middle finger missing? It's a bluesy sound. We change from an A major to an A dominant seven. There are a lot of possibilities. Okay, so let's pause for a second here and do a quick recap of what we're doing and why we're doing it. My hope is that you're somewhat familiar with the basic open position chords. And my hope is that now you know a bunch of tricks and fun things you can do with those chords that are more than just tricks, they're ways to really improve a rhythm guitar part. All the strumming we're doing, by the way, fits into the category of rhythm guitar. Uh, now, there's one important part, so listen up for one second here. We're not focusing on the right hand too much today. We're focusing on the left hand a lot. But there's one important thing I want to let you know about what I'm doing with the right hand. Because um, some of you may be doing this right now at home, and it might not sound quite the way I'm doing it. Whatever finger is being added or lifted off or moved with the left hand, you want to make sure the listener can hear this new thing you're doing. You've got to focus the right pick, the right hand and the pick. You've got to focus in on the string where the action is. So if I'm strumming uh, an A chord and I'm lifting off my middle finger on the third string, I want to make sure that I'm giving a lot of priority to the third string. Even though I'm strumming a variety of strings, I'm really going to focus my pick on the third string of the guitar. Let's focus on the right hand for a second. I'm focusing in on this, that string right there, the third skinny string. In this particular case, it's because that's the string where the action is. I'm on an A chord, and I'm lifting off my middle finger, which is on the third string. So notice I'm not strumming all six strings equally. If I did that, listen to the effect. You kind of lose you know, that neat sound of that middle finger lifting off. So now I'm going to focus my pick in on my right hand, and I'm going to strum Really, I'm going to strum the, the inner four strings with a little more priority. I'm going to kind of avoid the fat string and the skinny string. Mm -hmm. 
Notice I'm not strumming them all equally. And again, why am I not strumming them all equally? I want the listener to hear whatever effect I'm going for with my left hand. So I call that focusing the pick. Whatever chord you happen to be strumming, could be a C, D, A, A, whatever. If you're lifting off a finger, putting down a finger, whatever you're doing, prioritize that string in your strum, which largely means do not worry about strumming all the strings. Okay, you want the listener to hear this new thing you're giving them. Okay, you ready to move on? We've covered C, we've covered uh, D, we've covered uh, A. Um, how about a G chord? For our purposes right now, I'm going to ask that you play your G chord with a middle ring and pinky. Okay, now some of you, this might be how you always do G. Um, hopefully you've, you've uh, worked in a G chord in one form or another. But for today, for our purposes today, I need you to play the fat string with your ring finger, the fifth string, the A string with your middle, and your pinky way over here. Now this might be awkward for a lot of you because you might not have fingered it this way before but there are a lot of benefits to holding down the G this way, okay? So even if this takes you, you know, a day or two or a week or two to get used to, believe me, it's worth it, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so there's my G chord. Remember the theme today is chord play, okay? So how can you play around with a G chord? The singer sings through a verse, you've got four or eight beats to do something. One of the easiest things is adding your index finger. See how it's up here waiting for action? And by the way, that's your smart finger there on your left hand, right? The index finger loves to do work. It's, it's dying to do some work. We're going to add the index finger, second string, first fret right there. Okay, listen to the effect. And again, I'm going to be focusing my strumming on the skinnier strings in this particular case because I want the listener to hear the sound. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Tangled Up in Blue, the Bob Dylan song. So easy. It's your smart, strong index finger just adding in one note. Piece of cake, right? But it gets a, a neat effect. And again, I was not strumming all six of those strings with my right hand. If I did this new note I'm adding, it might get lost in the, in the mix, right? So I was focusing my strumming maybe on the four skinny strings. Okay, what else can you do with a G chord? I hope you like this one. Middle finger dropping down one string. When I say dropping, I mean dropping down in this direction. Moving from the fifth string, second fret, to the fourth string, second fret. Guess what? We're going to get that rockabilly sixth chord kind of sound. Check this out. I mean, that's easy, right? You can do that, you know one minute, you don't even have to practice that. Now because my action, the excitement over here, was happening on the fatter, you know, it happened from the fifth string to the fourth string, I was not strumming all six strings. I was strumming maybe the four fattest ones. Because I want the listener to hear that. Okay, now is a good time to pause for a second. And to encourage you to send me an email or a phone call at the end of today's show, in a few minutes you'll see that, um, how to get a hold of us. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, love to hear from you. So uh, send an email or give a phone call and uh, I'd be happy to, um, to walk you through this again. But I think you probably get the idea by now, right? We're taking the basic chords. In fact, we're focusing mainly on major chords today because major chords are musically, they're the most satisfying to uh, to modify, to play with, um, and maybe I should say the most common to modify, and the most common to, to mess around with, more than, more than minor chords. So far today we've covered C, D, A, and G. Uh, I bet we have time to mess around a little bit with F. Now F is a tricky one, because an F chord is hard enough as it is, right? But we're going to make it easier right now. Okay, for those of you who are, are still working on your F chord, two strings with one finger. Now that by itself is not the hardest thing. It's getting everything else down and making it all sound good. The F chord is not easy, uh, but I can make it easier for you in a way right now. Imagine an F chord where you did not have to squeeze the skinny string. So I have an open skinny string, my index finger on the second string, my middle on the third string, and my ring on the fourth string. For our purposes today, I'm going to avoid the two fat strings altogether. I'm only going to strum the four skinny strings. We'll listen to our modified F chord. Now it's called an F major 7.
very pretty sound. An F major, traditional F major sounds like this. My index finger is squeezing two strings with one finger. F major seven, less work. We're letting that skinny string ring clearly by itself. My index finger, I know it's hard to see here, but my index finger is only squeezing on the second skinny string, not two strings. Pretty chord, you know. If you're playing a song that has an F chord in it and you can't quite get the F chord to sound the way you want to, experiment. Maybe the F major seven could be a good substitute until the day comes when you really master your F chord. By the way, if I could give you one uh, quick tip on working on the F chord, here's the tip. Left elbow in towards the guitar. Can you see how my left elbow over here is coming in, almost like I'm trying to touch the guitar with my elbow? And that forces me to roll over my index finger. See how my index finger rolls over when I move my elbow? You actually want to squeeze with the edge of your index finger. Now this doesn't make it instantly easy, but it goes a long way to getting a good sound. I've had students who sound much better on the F chord just from this trick. And again, it involves the left elbow moving in towards the guitar, squeezing with this edge, the thumb side edge of your index finger, really curling around your wrist. You go a long way to getting a good sound. Now I bet we have time for one more quick one, the E major chord. Right, so we're modifying all these chords. The theme today is chord play. I hope you find a way to use these as soon as possible. An E major chord. Well, look what we have with E major. We have the pinky doing nothing over here, right? Gotta love that pinky. The pinky is available to squeeze all over the neck of the guitar, but here's some ways that are guaranteed to sound interesting. The pinky can focus in on the skinny string, second fret, or the second skinny string, second fret, or the third skinny string, second fret. Let's do a little close-up on the left hand for a second here. Again, we're talking about the E major. We're talking about adding in the pinky either on the second, uh, sorry, the first string, second fret, second string, second fret, or third string, second fret. Here are the different sounds you get. First, here's your basic E major chord in the open position. Here's what it sounds like if I add the pinky on the skinny string, second fret. Second string, second fret. And third string, second fret. Okay, so I'm going to play you out a little bit here. Thanks for watching. I'm going to make up a song here using the E chord with my pinky dancing around. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to send an email or give a phone call. We'll see you next time.